So now let's take a look at configuring a floating static route. Now, if you want to follow along, this packet tracer activity is available for download. It's linked in the description, so you can download it and follow along. This is the same network that we've used we used for a couple of other videos. So configuring uh, static routes in a dual stack environment and configuring default static routes. What we've done is we've added on another link here between R1 and R3. So R1 is right now forwarding all of its traffic up here. And R3 is forwarding all of its traffic up here to R2. And we want to go ahead and leave it that way. But what we want to do is configure a floating static route in case one of these two links goes down. And that's what a floating static route does. A floating static route, you configure a static route with a higher administrative distance than the other route that it's backing up. And then if the other route goes down, the floating static route will take over. So <clears throat> let's start by configuring this. So we're going to go to R1. And because this is going to be a short term, so if one of these things goes down, we want all traffic to be routed over here. We're going to go ahead and do this as a default static route that is floating. So I'm going to start on R1. And on R1, I'm going to log in and go to global config. Now this is going to be a um, default static route. So it's IP route. 0.0.0.0. .0 Remember, we did this in our previous video. Because we're going over a point-to-point -point serial line, I'm going to go ahead and write it as a directly connected or an exit interface route, so serial 000. But then to make it a floating static route, I need to give it an administrative distance of higher than 1, which is the route that is backing up, another static route. And when you hit your question mark here, you'll see that it gives you a value of 1 through 255, and it says distance metric for this route. Now, I don't like this terminology because you see metric and you think, oh, then it's talking about metric. No, it's not. It's talking about administrative distance. It's just a little bit odd terminology. You, what you want to focus on is here the distance, which identifies it as administrative distance, not actually how far away it is. It's a little bit weird terminology there. We're going to give it a value of 200. Now, I'm going to exit out, and I'm going to do a show run. Not a show run. I didn't want to show, and I wanted a show IP interface. I wanted show IP route. There we go. Type the command that I want. Now, notice that is not in use right now. That's because this route has an administrative distance of 1. And so it's using that rather than the other one we did. If we do a show run, though, we come down to our routing section. We're going to see here is our backup route. Now remember, a route one way does not mean there's a route another the other way. So we need to do a default uh, floating static route on this device as well. So. We'll do it. We'll go to config t whoops, log in first, en class, then we'll do config t. So it's going to be an IP route and default static route. If I can type, there we go. And we're going to go as a directly connected static route out serial 001. And again, we're going to assign that at an administrative distance of 200. And then copy, run, start. OK, now we looked at the routing table over here. So show IP route. OK, what happens if this interface goes down? So with this routing table in mind and we see our default static route being used here let's shut down that interface and that interface is g01 so we're going to go to config t interface g01 and we are going to shut it down so that goes down now let's look at our 
show IP route and look at our routing table. So at this point, all of our other static routes are gone, but this one is now in play. This was our backup static route. S000 was directly connected out serial 000. So that static route kicked in. Now if we reactivate the interface, interface G01, whoops, config T, interface G01, no shutdown. Now let's take a look. I'll just do a do show IP route this time. And we'll see that all of our static routes are back in play. That's what a floating static route does. If something goes down, that floating static route will kick in and it will start using that floating, if you've configured it, it'll start using that as a backup route. Do a copy run start. And that is how and why you would configure a floating static route. Now, one thing to be aware of when it comes to floating static routes. If you're using routing protocols, routing protocols will all always adjust to changes in network topology. Floating static routes can be used to back up routing protocol routes. We'll do it on a fairly regular basis. But remember that just because there's a route there doesn't mean there's a route back. So if this line goes down, this one will redirect all network traffic this way which will be fine, um, but any uh, traffic that's destined for the internet will actually come back and this one may not see the route correctly. So you might have to adjust. Anytime you're dealing with floating static routes, you can put in backup routes. Sometimes, depending on your routing infrastructure, you might have to make some adjustments anyway. Just be aware of that. Um, Ideally, your routes will never go down. It does happen. If it happens, always double check and make sure routing is working the way you wanted it to if you've backed it up with floating static routes. Okay, um, that takes us through the last of our module on static routing.